Good Tuesday morning. I'm Jared Klein here with your morning rush on the NBC 29 YouTube page. Let's start things off with a look at the top stories you guys are clicking on over on NBC29.com. Coming in at number one, emotions run high during Charlottesville gun violence forum. Number two, Terry Holland, who transformed UVA basketball, has died. And then coming in at number three, Waynesboro man arrested after police say he eluded officers. All right, well, more than 100 people showed up at a forum last night to address gun violence in the city of Charlottesville. NBC 29's Dryden Quigley was there, and she shares what people said needs to be done. Take a look. I wanted to hear the heart of the chief. He's new, want to find out what his ideas are, and I appreciate the fact that he wanted to hear from the community. Uh, I have a couple comments. I Mary a Coleman was one of the many who showed up to the forum held by police chief Michael Cotches. She spoke about the underlying issues behind gun violence. I'm thinking all the time of the intersection between crime and poverty. And the bottom line is if people can't be included in the normal economy, they're going to create their own. They're going to sell drugs. They're going to sell guns. Um, and it's not a good situation for any community to have such a big wage gap like Charlottesville does. Some chose to speak to the crowd instead of police, saying it's on everyone to stop gun violence. When points are raised about parents need to do A, B, and C, or the police need to do X, Y, and Z, we also have to collectively ask ourselves, what are you doing? But not everybody felt like they left with answers. I wanted to get a better sense of what community policing is. Um, and I don't think I really got that tonight. Um, I, and I made this comment of, you know, what are you measuring to see if the community policing is happening? And I don't think the chief had an answer prepared tonight, but I, I plan to hold him to it. Chief Kotcha says he takes every comment seriously. The community has to know that it wasn't just words, that they didn't just come here one night. So they have to know that we're going to continue to reassess what we're doing. And uh, there's, I, I got some great takeaways out of tonight, some great ideas. Words that people hope will spark action. His answers were sufficient for now. I think the proof will be in how he follows up with all of us to put into practice some of our suggestions. In Charlottesville, Dryden Quigley, NBC 29 News. All right, thank you, Dryden, for that report. Legendary UVA men's basketball coach and former athletic director Terry Holland has died. He passed away Sunday night at the age of 80 in Charlottesville. Holland had been suffering from Alzheimer's disease. Holland coached at UVA for 16 seasons from 1976 to 1990, leading the Hoos to nine NCAA tournament appearances and two Final Fours. He led the Hoos to an ACC championship in 1976, and he was Virginia's all-time winningest coach until this season when coach Tony Bennett broke Holland's win record. His impact was lasting. I have the utmost respect for him as a, a great basketball coach and his influence there. But he put this place, at least from my upbringing, on the map and established so much of what is today. And He was tough on all of us. Uh, you, you know, you see him off the court and he had the coat and tie and uh, Southern gentleman. Holland if you will. is survived but, by his but wife when you got and inside the two daughters and on the court. And he three. was a fierce competitor, loved to win. Holland is survived by his wife and two daughters and three grandchildren. Well, the Virginia General Assembly is done for this year for its 2023 session. But before adjourning over the weekend, the General Assembly did pass a stopgap funding measure, and it included money for schools after a statewide accounting error resulted in districts receiving fewer dollars than anticipated. We've told you about this issue impacting local schools here in the community. Now, in December of last year, the Yunkin administration became aware the online tool used for budgeting had overestimated state assistance. School superintendents were notified of the issue late last month. Now, Congresswoman Abigail Spanberger is calling on the governor to be transparent about his mitigation plans. If you're told that you have X amount of dollars to spend on educating students and supplies for classrooms and pay for your staff, uh, and three quarters of the way through the school year, you're told that the number that you were given, your budget to work with was wrong. Uh, that puts school districts in a very, very difficult place. The Democrat says what is important now is that all schools are given a game plan moving forward. 
Well, a community kitchen in Charlottesville that offers opportunities for black entrepreneurs is one step closer to opening its doors. The Beacon Kitchen stands for Black Entrepreneur Advancement and Community Opportunity Network. Now that its pilot kitchen has been approved by the city, it's beginning construction on a larger space to help serve area entrepreneurs. The new place is going to be significant because not only will it have 16 workstations, um, four of which will be in isolation rooms um, so that individuals that are cooking or that are baking. New Hill Development Corporation says the goal is to begin construction on it sometime soon. All right, the rain has moved out of the area, but there is some fog left behind this morning, so watch out for that on your morning commute. Let's turn things over now to meteorologist David Rogers with what we can expect for the rest of our Tuesday. Good morning, everyone. The rain has moved out, but we are getting our day off to a cloudy and foggy start, so a good idea to give yourself some extra time. But Doppler radar shows conditions are dry. A lot of that uh, energy has now shifted to the north where they're getting uh, accumulating across the northeast into New England. In the meantime, high pressure she could be dry over the next couple of days. Temperatures still will be averaging uh, several degrees above our normal. Next chance for additional rain will come Thursday into Friday as we track a warm front cold front combination. After that, it looks like things clear out just in time for the weekend. Should be a pleasant weekend coming up. Sunshine and temperatures in the 50s and 60s. That's a quick look at your forecast for now. Have a great and safe day. All right, and here's that Michael and Son seven day forecast shaping up to be a beautiful day with a high of 70 degrees as we say goodbye to February. March looks like it's arriving like a lamb this year with high 63 and partly sunny skies. And it looks like we have a chance of rain on Friday, high of 52, but looking like a beautiful weekend out there, something to look forward to. All right, I hope you guys have a great Tuesday. We'll see you again on NBC 29 News at noon.